All right, King, I have a question for you. You're the king of Sweden. You decreed a drilling and grinding plant that eventually grew into the Husqvarna sewing machine company. So you, above everyone else, should know pretty much everything about these machines, their origin, how they were made, differences, etc. So the question I have for you is, I've got three Husqvarna Viking green machines on my workbench. Two of them are type 21s and one of them is a 19 special. They've all got different motors. They're all different. And the thing that I need to be able to explain to my subscribers and to my friends on Facebook is what's the difference between these electric motors? Okay? I mean, let me, sir, let me, let me move away from you for a second and just show all these folks kind of what I'm talking about. So here, Your Highness, we have an original Swedish made 1.5 amp motor. Normally the 19 Special comes with a 1 amp motor, but I've stuck a 1.5 in here just so that I could make my point of the ground. Assuming it's all equal, what's the difference? So here we've got a 1.5 amp uh, motor over here, we have a Type 21 that also has a 1.5 amp motor. You can kind of see right here. This is not a replacement motor. This is an original motor put out by your factory in Sweden. And this is what it looks like. I'm seeing some oiling points on both sides but I'm not, not even able to check the brushes on this motor unless I take the thing apart. And then finally over here, we also have a Type 21 made in Sweden, right? 110 to 120 volts, 1.5 amps. And here we've got an American made motor, but I know that this was installed in Sweden because I found numerous Type 21 models and even some 21A models and CL type uh, Husqvarna's as well that have the Westinghouse motor. And this also is rated, I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not. Yeah, way at the, way at the top in the middle. Kind of hard to see, but it's 1.5 amps just as it indicates on the nomenclature plate. So we've got 1.5 amps type 21, this type of motor. We've got another type 21 right here, 1.5 amps, this type of motor. And again, these are not knockoff motors. These were from your factory, your highness. And then finally, we have a 19E, which, like I said, normally comes with a 1 amp motor, but I've stuck a 1.5 amp original Swedish motor in there as well. So we've got this motor, we've got this motor, and finally, we have this motor, and they're all supposed to be equal. So, Your Highness, the question I have is, what's going on? Why are they all different? Different suppliers, but the same standards, different power outputs? Because I know that when I went into this motor right here, it definitely has different size brushes. They're smaller than the brushes in your original motor that came out of Sweden with the original green machines. And this one, to be perfectly frank and honest, I didn't even pull this sucker apart. I just saw it was original and that it was running, it seemed to be running well, but I didn't even look at the brushes. So I would guess, just because of the overall motor case size, if we measure them, this motor over here is, let's see, from side to side, going to be about four and a quarter inches overall width which, and, and the significance of that is it's going to give me an indication potentially as to the size of the copper wire motor wraps. And the thing, the thing with motor wraps is they play a huge impact. They have a huge impact and they play a, a significant role 
in what that motor is capable of doing. So if we have a Westinghouse American-made motor, but it was installed in Sweden in that factory back in the day, then we have to assume, well, we shouldn't assume, but we can hope that it's going to have the same, being rated 1.5 amps, that it's going to have comparable copper wraps so that the power output is going to be comparable to this one over here. Where are you? Ah, right there. Comparable to this one where we can clearly see the motor wraps right here. And the other motor wrap here and here. And then we're going to have the identical motor wraps on the other side of this original Green Machine Swiss 1.5 motor. And if we measure the overall length of this, I'm guessing we're going to find a slightly larger girth on this. And I'm, I'm correct, about four and three quarters inches across compared to four and a quarter on the Westinghouse motor. And I know as well that the, uh, the, the carbon brushes in this motor that you're looking at on the screen right now are going to be larger. Is that significant? You bet it is. Because the more carbon contact with this inner electrical field right here, where they're going to be running across that and completing the circuit to drive uh, that, that motor to its maximum output, the, the motor wraps, the carbon brushes are going to both be working in concert and are going to be playing a significant role in what that motor is capable of doing. Just as with this motor here, which we have a little bit of an unknown, we know it's original uh, because I found this motor in other Type 21s as well. Um, and my research is mixed. Some say it was an earlier phase of the motor. Others say that this motor uh, came after. So I, I honestly, I'd love to tell you, but based on, based on the technology and the look and the wiring, and when I refer to wiring, I'm talking about this area over here, the intricacy of how that circuitry has to be completed, and the, the complexity of the wire wraps in this 1.5 amp motor here, this is going to be a later motor. Uh, this is going to be probably a, an earlier motor sometime between when they rolled this Westinghouse out, which would have been post this, and they had this motor as an original motor as well with the green machine. The only thing different about these three motors uh, that also plays a factor in how they run and how efficient they are is that here you've got oiling points for the pulleys on each end of the motor and here we get to it here you've got a closed system you can oil it but there's not an intended place to add oil anywhere to this motor as far as the pulley ends that are going to spin up and create friction and drag so this is a little bit of a dilemma and when I fire these motors up you're going to be able to judge based on the sound alone what kind of power these mo mo motors are putting out I've got both of these type 21s with bobbins on the end so you're not going to see the needle running you're simply going to see uh, and hear the sound of that motor firing up and I didn't measure this one the overall length to get an idea of how much we have in the way of copper wraps in there but this is significantly shorter I'm even extending it out on the left a little bit to give it a little bit of an edge and we're only at about four inches across so that leads me to believe that the quality uh, and the, uh, the 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 substantiveness of the copper wraps in this motor are going to be slightly less than what this one puts out and probably about equal I would say close to this Westinghouse as far as the wraps on that the Westinghouse might have a slight edge but again this was not engineered in Sweden this motor was supplied by Westinghouse which is an American based company and again the motor brushes in this Westinghouse are also going to be smaller than the original green machine motor and I'm referring to this one so that is going to play a factor in what kind of burst and what kind of power this, this motor potentially can put out. 
again when it comes to motor brushes you got to fit that motor brush like a glove to that motor you're going to have that motor brush well right here and you might be able to fit a smaller brush even smaller than the one that's in there into that well and it'll make contact with that inner electrical field but it won't be making uh as wide of contact creating a larger electrical uh surge to that motor so you're going to get less power you're going to get less power output so and for those of you that are geeky like me a little bit i know i, I don't want to make any of you electrical engineers okay I don't want to make any of you electrical engineers, but as we look at these three machines, again on the far right, a 19 Special, where I've stuck a 1.5 amp original Swedish motor into it, the one in the middle, you've got an earlier version of a 1.5 amp for that Type 21 Husqvarna, and then on the far left, you've got a Type 21, but it has a Westinghouse American-made motor that was installed in Sweden. It wasn't installed in America. None of these green machines were ever built in the US. They were all built and assembled in Sweden. But like a lot of manufacturers these days, they make changes sometimes based on the bottom line. You know, I can only imagine, and I'm, I'm, I'm speculating, but speculate with me if you wouldn't mind. I'm only speculating that the motor on the far right, that original Swedish motor, is going to be a more costly item to manufacture and produce than either of the motors on the left. Again, as I look at that motor on the far right, the complexity, the motor wraps, the electrical circuitry, and everything else tells me that that's a lot more complicated motor uh, to put together and to assemble and to manufacture. It pushes the cost up. So then we have this motor in the middle, which is a closed case, which Generally, they do that when they're wanting to make that a quick assemble type motor that isn't going to, by appearance, need maintenance. I can tell you without a doubt that every single motor needs some level of maintenance, including the closed case ones like this one in the middle. And then finally, the Westinghouse on the far end, we've got an American-made motor, which if you're exporting motors or shipping them to Sweden to go inside of Swedish made sewing machines there's got to be enough margin to have it make sense you know the old saying no mission if there's no margin so if they can assemble these motors in the US ship them all the way to Sweden and then install them in these type 21 green machines that got them then that's telling me that that motor was probably probably made a little bit more cheaply than that original Swedish motor on the far right. So again, it comes down to the bottom line, even for a great company like the Husqvarna Viking Sewing Machine Company, and that's certainly even more true today where they're making their Husqvarna Vikings all over the place. And you can find it being made in Hong Kong, Taiwan, the Philippines. It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. They're just doing it all over the place. And that all comes down to cost. You know, just like we've been critical sometimes of the people uh, that will ship jobs down to Mexico or to other places. And it all comes down to cost. It comes down to bottom line. So that is just a reality when you're looking at the cost of manufacturing items, which ultimately are going to sell for a pretty penny. Even back in the day, these green machines were not a cheap machine to purchase. So back to my geeky comment. For any of you that enjoy geeky stuff like I do, and I think that Bill, to some extent, does like geeky stuff. And so I put on my geeky reading glasses, if I may call them that, <laughs> so I can read a definition to you, and this is fun. Isn't Google wonderful? Anything you want to find out, pretty much, you can find on Google. And so I Googled how do you measure the or impact the maximum power output of an electrical motor? And this is what I got. In an electrical motor, the mechanical power is defined as the speed times the torque. So how many times is that motor turning 
to generate that torque output. It's going to play a huge factor. Mechanical power is typically defined as kilowatts or horsepower with one watt equaling one joule per second. I know I'm losing some of you right now, and that's okay. Or one newton meter per second. Horsepower is the work done per unit of time. So summarizing that, and I can go to another definition I looked up as well regarding the power of electrical motors to help clarify that a little bit. But really it is, the more times that motor can spin, almost like a 10-speed 10-speed bike, when you're increasing that gear ratio on a bike, you're going to get fewer revolutions, but you're going to be able to get more power output. An electrical motor is a little bit different. The more revolutions you're getting from that motor, the more drive, the more spin up, by definition, you're getting more output, you're getting more joules, you're getting more energy, and by definition, then you're getting more power. And that's a, a slight layman's definition. I have different degrees from higher education, but it's not as an engineer. I, I, I love reading up on this stuff and learning, but if there's any engineers out there and you want to clarify this, or if you want to critique what I've said, knock yourself out. But this is what I'm getting off of Google anyway, so it's the best we have as a resource right now. Unless you want to travel to Wisconsin, and I'll shoot a video with us talking about motors together. Wouldn't that be fun? So, at any rate, another Google definition in relation to power that I think is helpful. It was at least clarifying for me. It says, we can increase the turning force or torque that a motor can create in three ways. So there's three ways we can increase the turning factor or the torque of a motor, and that is to have a more powerful permanent uh, magnet, because motors have magnets in them, right? Or we can increase the electrical current flowing through the wire, or we can make the coil so it has many turns or many loops a very thin wire instead of one turn of thick wire. So even the thickness of the wire wraps on these motors can play a factor in that torque output and the ultimate power that these motors are able to generate. So again, kudos to Google. That's good information. And we might not fully be able, be able to digest that, but what it tells us is that what we can't see can play a factor in what that motor can do for us when we sit down to sew with it, when we sit down to take on that project, not every motor is necessarily going to be created equal. And I can testify to that when it comes to these new Chinese motors that they're pushing hard and heavy across the internet. You can find them, find them on eBay. You can find them on a lot of those other sites. And they're boasting of, like these motors behind me, having 1.5 amps. But I'll tell you one thing. I've tested a couple of those Chinese motors, not even close. When it comes to the quality of that wire wrap, the thickness of it, that output is so much less. That torque is so much less than any of these motors behind me that you're really being cheated if you invest in one of those Chinese motors. And I'm sorry if any of you watching this are trying to sell those motors. But the reality is you got to be honest. You got to say, okay, it's rated as a 1.5 amp motor, but truthfully, the output, the torque, the power, the burst of this motor is going to be a fraction of what any of these motors, even the Westinghouse, can put out more torque and more drive and more force than those Chinese motors. And let's look at that right now as far as letting you listen, hear, and you can be the judge as far as which motor you think is kicking more torque, driving more power. Again, they're all set up a little bit differently. The brushes are different. I haven't done my, uh, my service and cleaning on any of the machines on the right. The one on the far left, I have. That one's fully ready to go. And coincidentally, I should confess, is going out the door today to my good friend Aaron out in Tucson, uh, Arizona. And uh, hers happens to have that Westinghouse motor. That's how it came and that's what it is. So the reality is when it comes to uh, what you get, if you don't look underneath the hood, 
you might be assuming that the motor you're getting is this one over here, the original one, the Swedish one that I've shown in videos before. And in fact, you might be getting this motor in the middle or this motor from Westinghouse all the way on the far end. And just so none of you get the impression that I'm going to badmouth the Westinghouse American-made motor, the reality is the Swiss were very, very particular about choosing their vendors. Just like today, businesses will have approved vendors, and they'll go through a vetting process that's very specific in assessing the quality, the conditions. Many cases, those, those uh, manufacturers will actually visit those factories and see exactly how those parts are being made, the quality, the QA factor, everything about it. And I have no doubt that back in the day when they decided to go with the Westinghouse motor, which is what's on Aaron's Type 21, that they were very particular. But even when you're particular, it may not be apples to apples. And I just have to be honest in saying that just because over the years, the manufacturing uh, quality, uh, the planned obsolescence, the, the design to fail uh, changes. And as a result, the quality, the torque, the output changes as well. So let's, let's fire these motors up real quick. And then I'm going to wrap this video up and you can post your comments in the chat as to what you think, or you can post your comments on Facebook or on YouTube as to what you think in relation to these motors and the quick little pop off I did in firing up the motor as far as the power perceived in that motor. Again, when you sit down to it, that motor spinning up right now with no load is not going to give you a absolutely crystal clear assessment of what that motor is capable of doing when you transfer that power across that drive shaft, across that machine, and finally down to the, to the needle. So many things can be lost, so many things can be impacted. Uh, you know, the maintenance of that, of that machine, the quality of the maintenance and the thoroughness of it. You know, was it serviced on my workbench or did some tech that really ultimately wants to sell you a new sewing machine, drop some oil in it, as some of my customers have told me, and you're not getting the full benefit of whatever that motor is going to put out because it's lost in the transfer between what happens from the motor finally down to the needle. Does that make sense? So let's fire these things up, and I will be quiet, which most of you know is no small task, and then you can let me know what you think. So we're the first one we're going to fire up is this Westinghouse motor on the far left. I'm going to go pedal to the metal, and you can let me know what you think. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move the pedal right over here. And we're going to use the same pedal on, on Aaron's machine and also this middle machine, okay? Here we go. Okay, so that's Aaron's machine. Now we're going to go to this Type 21 in the middle with this closed cased motor. Here we go. And finally, we're going to go to this original Husqvarna motor on the far side and fire this one up and see what you think of this one. All right, you ready? Let me go across one more time so that I can give you a chance to hear it twice. Here again is Aaron's motor. The closed case motor. Whoops.
And finally, the original uh, Husqvarna motor. So there you have it, three genuine, original, green machine Husqvarna Viking machines made in Sweden with three different 1.5 motors, 1.5 amp motors. And you've heard them now running at peak. I had that pedal all the way down. So I really would welcome your feedback on kind of what you heard. Again, what I'm hearing here in the workshop is probably going to be different than what you're hearing through the video, depending on how you're playing it back and how you're listening to this premiere, uh, the quality of your speakers on your laptop or your iPad or however you're listening to it, that may also play a factor in kind of what you're hearing. But the spin-up uh, rate, again, what defines torque is not just the electrical supply to these motors they're all going to be somewhere between 110 to 120 somewhere in that range but the 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 spin up the number of times that motor is turning defines the torque as well and i was hearing a difference between all three motors i'm not sure about you but again if you want to post it in the chat or post it afterwards i welcome that so again as you're looking at purchasing a sewing machine whether it's from me which i hope uh, because you already know the difference, or whether you decide to go to Craigslist or eBay or somewhere else, don't assume as soon as that person says, oh yeah, it's a green machine, it's a Viking Husqvarna, uh, it's a vintage one, that what's underneath the hood is going to be equal. You've seen that there can be a pretty significant difference in what's underneath the hood, and ultimately that impacts you when you sit down to see what you can do underneath the needle. So stay tuned for more great videos like this. Always appreciate all of you that take time in your busy day and your busy evening to join me on a premiere like this and to participate in the chat. So God bless you guys and buy carefully when you're making an investment like this.